Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here with us again. And in this um, very special program, I would like to say something. Um, I want to dedicate this first song and this program to somebody that is a very special person in my life. Quiero dedicar este programa y esta canción en especial con la que voy a comenzar para una persona muy importante en mi vida. Um, our weights got apart for um, because of many different circumstances. Nuestros caminos eh, se han separado por muchas diversas circunstancias, but he will always be an important person for me and my best wishes will always be with him. Eh, mis mejores deseos siempre estarán contigo, eh, deseo lo mejor y espero que todos disfruten este programa tanto como nosotros. I really hope all of you enjoy this program as much as we will. Let's get started. Todos dicen que es mentira que te quiero porque nunca me habían visto enamorada. Yo te juro que yo misma no comprendo el por qué me fascina tu mirada. Cuando estoy cerca de ti y estás contento, no quisiera que de nadie te acordaras. Tengo celos hasta del pensamiento que pueda recordarte a otra mujer amada. Júrame que aunque pase mucho tiempo, no olvidarás el momento en que yo te conocí. Mírame, pues no hay nada más profundo ni más grande en este mundo que el cariño que te di. Bésame con un beso enamorado, como nadie me ha besado desde el día en que nací. about divs, divas, divos, <laughs> let's talk about. Yeah, th thank you, thank you very much for the song. I know, uh, you you know, I wanted to share be before we jump into today's content that now that you had a chance of sharing uh, this message for this beloved person for you, it also reminded me uh, that sometimes uh, singers, uh, if we don't have money or if we don't have anything else to share, uh, we have our music, and it is music that gives most of the of what we we can sometimes with words ourselves tell. So thank you very it's much. It's always part of us, part of our lives, and part of our bodies, and part of our souls are impressed in the music we give to others. Yeah. And I many times say that I could 
I could uh, tell st the story of my life by using songs. <laughs> With just songs, I could tell the whole uh, story of my life. So, but now let's jump into today's topic, because today's topic is uh, something that I know Katia enjoys a lot. I know you will, you will see she is, you will see she's uh, even more amused than ever. For and it is for very good reasons. If you notice the the name of today's topic, today we are talking about. Uh, I was about to say a plague, but they are not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, today we are talking about a, a very special sort of monster, and for that purpose, I am putting on the screen one of the <laughs> most famous monsters of uh, history of cinema, and I wanted to call it monsters. You will see as we as we progress in today's content why I decided to to call them monsters. Uh, to which Katya deeply disagreed, <laughs> by the way. Of but, but since we're, you, you will see that it is going to be somehow a funny topic that somehow has a very deep meaning in the world of opera. So that's why I chose this monster to make us laugh a little because the, the other stories that we will talk about, if they were only legends, that would be fun, but provided that many of those actually happened in the past, and continue to happen in the present, and I'm pretty sure that, unfortunately, they will continue to pass in the future. So, what is it that we are going to talk about today? Again, uh, now I am. I will be sharing a series of memes throughout the program, <laughs> because uh, I, I still believe that there is no better way to say to talk about serious topics than using memes that would that would relax us a little. And today we are talking about divas. And I am talking about divas, but in fact, we are talking also about divos. So anybody on stage who is actually called a diva or a divo is today's program. And we are about to share with you why is it that I call them monsters. <laughs> so first things first, uh, the, the word diva, in fact, uh, you may know that it is a word that comes from Italian which actually means a goth or a goddess, depending on oh, diva or diva. And in the early beginning, it was used to describe an artist with exceptional qualities, to which I fully agree. Uh, I think we all have witnessed uh, singers who make out of their performances something really outstanding, incredible, amazing. The quality of their voice, the quality of their musicality, the quality of their intonation, uh, the, the quality of how they portray the character. There are a good number of things that can make us actually maybe call them divas or divas because of, of that immense quality of their art. But unfortunately, that is not what we are going to be talking about today. We are going to talk <laughs> about today this connotation of diva, of divo, of, a, of an artist, a singer, who actually has an ego much bigger than his actual qualities. <laughs> and, and to which... <laughs> and, and that people encourage somehow. Well, why is that? I, I think that... Uh, I said that we, as well, when we are public, we actually create those monsters because instead of having them perform professionally, what we do is to applaud for all those gossips, for all those misbehaviors on the stage, for all, for, all, for all the negative things, we just justify them by saying, oh, he's just a diva, so we must excuse her for whatever she does, which is something to, uh, to which I would never agree. So, of course, bef before we jump into the first example, we need to put a soprano on the stage because the, <laughs> uh, the, the funniest memes I found are around sopranos, so you would excuse me, but people's creativity is usually around them. It is not that there, are not the, the, that there aren't male divas. There are, and there is a good number of them. But for some reason, sopranos tend to have to, to attract <laughs> <laughs> most of the comments. So let me start by sharing you one of the very one of the many very common comments that that these divas or divas say. A diva could say that his or her voice is either the best, the nicest, 
or the strongest that the world has ever known. And I am, I'm pretty sure that now that Katya is is uh, looking at us with that face, at this point, she's she's thinking of someone, right? <laughs> You're already thinking of someone. I'm thinking about lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> So many names that we, we wouldn't have, uh, even five hours wouldn't be enough to name them. I want to recall the name of a baritone who used to sing in Bellas Artes in the early 2000s, whose name, again, I cannot provide because he's active and many people know him, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that he used to say that the Palacio de Bellas Artes was very fortunate that he was able to sing there. The, the nicest boy to, voice of the baritones of those those days singing the Bellas Artes. So, what do you think? Oops. Um, well, we have to um, accept as singers that we are not perfect. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about perfection last program, and I was kidding about it. But <laughs> even when we have uh, abilities and skills, uh, well, nobody's perfect. So uh, we have to respect the public and thank the public and be humble and do our best. But don't believe yourself you're the, the best one. And, and the funny thing is that I have heard recordings of him. And from my perspective, he's not the best baritone voice I've heard. Uh, I, I, think, I, I think that if I had him to, to tell him face to face, pro probably he would try to beat me or he would yell at me or tell me <laughs> some nasty words. <laughs> call, call me an ignorant or something because I couldn't applaud him. But you know, th this thing about uh, being a diva or a diva, which at this point you are trying to laugh, uh, in fact, on a stage or when you are trying to build a program with another singer, it is in fact something that is very hard to deal with. Uh, I, I remember, I recall that you and I have had a couple of conversations around, if it was another singer trying to put this program with you, things at this point would be very nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Because you, you people may see the singer, the baritone, the mezzo, the tenor go to stage. Thank you for the applause. Thank you very much. Go back to stage. But behind the curtains, <laughs> behind the scenes, <laughs> there is a good number of things happening. If the singer who comes after you notices that you get a much bigger applause <laughs> than yours, most likely he will not smile at you when you're <laughs> sitting the, the stage. Most likely he will see you with eyes that if, uh, if how, does it, how does it go? If looks could kill, you may have already been dead. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh my God, you don't deserve it. Yeah, and I am going to do better than you just did because I deserve a much bigger applause than yours, right? Yeah, that's right. There is a second comment. Uh, that helps us notice when there is a diva or a divo. Uh, the comment goes that the divos or the divas usually show at the rehearsal at the time it pleases them, not at the time it was appointed, because people know that you have to be at 1 p.m. or 5 p.m. or whatever for the rehearsal, but they arrive just at the time they please, because they want people, the other people, to wait for him. Why? just because he's the diva, just because he's the diva. And there's something that I also would like to, to make notice of that here. Uh, from my perspective, a singer that cannot show up at the time agreed is not a diva or a diva. It's simply known professional. It is lack of professionalism not showing up at the time agreed. So people, I think we really should stop clapping and say, Hi, well, he didn't show up, but you know, he's the devil, so he can do whatever he wants. No. If he's professional, yeah. he has to show up at the time agreed. If he's not ready, if he's sick, we understand. But not showing up, but for just the sake of I am not showing up, 
for me, it really doesn't work. What do you think about non-professional singers? I know you may have dealt with a couple of them. Just don't mention <laughs> their name. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say who is you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, well, yes, it's like a professional miss, professionalism uh, to not to respect the time of, of the rest of your teamwork. You have to respect the public, too. So uh, you serve the music. I serve the music. I serve the public. So I have to respect them. And I have to to be in time, and I have to be ready, and I have to give the best of me, of my voice, of my work. So, and before I, I mention the next uh, the, the next comment around divas or divas, let me do an act of divism on this recording. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm so surprised. Yeah. Just, just to prove my point, uh, there is a song, and I have mentioned it in the uh, previous programs, that singers like to do just whatever they please, just to show that they can do whatever they please. This song <laughs> is Granada, which I must confess, I do not particularly enjoy. Exactly because of that. I, I had a chance of working on it when I was working on the 50 music postcards. I I have to keep some notes much longer than written just because the accompaniment was giving too much <laughs> too much time for the note to be kept. But actually, I never felt comfortable for keeping those notes much longer than actually written. And I, I also recall that my comment in that postcard was that Granada, the, the song if actually sung as written, it is a very nice piece of music. But <laughs> provided that tenors do whatever they please and they keep the notes for as long as they want, you will notice, uh, I, I wouldn't like you to, to, to listen to, to what I am about to try to sing just as, ah, yeah, but Carreras keeps it for longer. Oh, but Domingo does it brighter. Don't, don't think about anything of that. Just try to, to notice that there are way too many exaggerations in the, the, the versions that we are used to listening. So, in fact, I will overdo a couple of them, and you will notice because maybe I will move my hands or I will exaggerate something, which doesn't mean that I am actually performing the song, which I am, what I, what I will try to do is to show you that that is an exaggeration. <laughs> okay, so let's go for that. Um, See how it goes. If if I laugh instead of singing, please forgive me. <laughs> but, but I'll try to do it seriously. So you may recall, or you may uh, you may be aware that usually the singer, the tenor, usually is a tenor who sings it, stands like this, and we, when he's about to sing, he starts like. Tierra soñada por mí, mi cantor se vuelve gitano cuando es para ti. Exaggeration one. Mi cantor, hecho de pan, Oh, 
jugosa manzana que me habla de amor. Es granada, manola, cantada en coplas preciosas. No tengo otra cosa que darte que un ramo de rosas, de rosas de suave fragancia que le diera marco a la Virgen morena. Here you, you may be very familiar with a long, long, long orchestral exager exaggeration. Again, now the orchestra is overdoing everything, you know. And after that, the tenors goes back. The rosas de suave fragancia que le dieran marco a la Virgen Morena. Granada, tu tierra está llena de lindas mujeres. You know, comes the pause because the, the singer cannot sing it continuously, so he has to say. De lindas mujeres de sangre, pos, y de sol. Well, I forgot something. I have to say, y de sol. <laughs> that, that horrible way of, of wrapping up. You're laughing, uh, but yes. you know you have heard many tenors do that. You know that, right? <laughs> the song! <Yeah>. <laughs> like that? <laughs> I know that at this point there is a number of tenors who didn't like how I laughed at the current versions, but this is how you actually listen to at Granada. All the lungs, <laughs> all the notes, super long, with pauses that are not written. It's the soul, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, people, we shouldn't be giving an applause for that. We really shouldn't be. We should be thanking the singer for singing things like, uh, songs like this, which I was telling you are very nice themselves, because they did a good job because they marked the pauses well, because the musicality, the whole melody of the song was performed good, but not because he kept the, the notes for much longer. I mean, <laughs> really, people, don't do that, please. <laughs> and, I, and I swear that I have never sung that on the stage that way. In fact, I think that I have sung it only a couple of times and never again. Because I know what people are expecting, and people are expecting you to keep the note for very long, even if it loses you all sense. You know, it looks like a mistake, but it's not. It's not, really. Let, let's go ahead with our comments. Enough for Granada. Uh, <laughs> and, and, we, and this is a comment which I just did. The diva or the divo just wants to add something that is not written, written just to know that he or she can. And we mentioned in our program of circus and acrobatics that we, of course, like to show that well. You know, I have, I have a good diaphragm control, so why not show enough that I can keep notes? But, but there is this matter of good taste. If the musician does it with good taste, you appreciate it. But if he does it just for the purpose of showing off, the people still applaud because I was just saying, ah, that's what they are expecting. 
But if you do it nice, then you're an artist. If you're just showing up, you may be something else, but really no, not an artist. And, and let us songs. There is also another song that you may be aware of. It is called Veracruz. Veracruz, rinconcito, ta -ra 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 You know, the, the melody, if you follow it, the melody is very nice. Veracruz, da -da 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 but when you hear it in the voice of a soprano or of a tenor, most of the time soprano, they go, Veracruz, rinconcito. You know, it is like if you are singing <laughs> uh, a verismo. And it, <laughs> Lara is not verismo. So, rinconcito, <laughs> donde hacen su nido. No, come on, it's rinconcito, donde hacen su nido, las olas del mar. Veracruz, da, 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 da. so very nice. So don't let divas to carry you away with those, those horrible versions of nice music. I don't imagine myself singing kind of happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> because I can. Yeah, yeah, uh, and you recall that I had mentioned in the in the in previous programs that I recall these mañanitas song to another tenor, which no, 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 God forgive us, uh, we don't deserve to live any longer for sure. Let, let me change the meme. This meme has been on the screen for enough, because there is a very good phrase here which says, "There is no half singing in the shower." <laughs> You're either a rock star or, no, or an opera diva. <laughs> oh my God, I'm bored of them. <laughs> Tell us, what is it that you like to sing in the shower? <laughs> I used to sing Lucia de la Verbur or something like this. I have to confess that I can <laughs> sing anything. Uh, uh, I mean, you, you don't know it, but here at home, I always have music in the background. I really love music, so I can be listening to music all day long. So if I happen to take a shower and it is Macbeth, then I could be either Macbeth or a Lady Macbeth or Banco or whoever is singing at that point in time. <laughs> I may even be the witches if, they, if it is the chord of the witches that is playing. So I really don't have a problem with that. Uh, sometimes I am, a, I am not a rock star because I don't really listen to much rock music. But I do like <laughs> other genders, so I can be any of those. And, and people, maybe you can share that with us also, that, that the shower is a very good place for singing. <laughs> it is because of the acoustic. Yeah, the acoustics, they, they, they give you back the, the tone of your voice. And so you notice things that in much bigger spaces you never notice. That is so true. Yeah, it feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's go for another one. Ah, and it is very common. I, I recall that you and I have had a, lots of conversations around it. The Divo or the Diva wants something not to be sung just, he, just because he doesn't want to. You know, we have mentioned a good number of times that you say, oh, I am going to sing La Traviata, but I am going to cut this, to cut this, to cut this, and I am going to, to sing only half or of the three areas. Ah, we're going to do the duet, but we're going to cut here, 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 and there. What is, what is that? If you're not able to sing that, why did you why did you have even agree to sing it on the stage, right? <laughs> well, uh, uh, in my case, I would like to mention, for example, um, this cavatina from L'Elysir d'Amour. Uh, first act. Uh, yeah, sometimes there are lots of repetitions and, oh, yeah. and you can, I yeah, mean, it's justified. You can change the entire opera or all the music just because you don't want to sing it as it is written. Makes sense. It can be justified, but, but very well justified. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. It has to be justified in in 
in a good number of given situations, one of them being right, that there are sometimes, and it happens a lot with Tony Setti, that has lots of repetitions. Uh, for instance, I would like to provide the, uh, the duet between Lucia and her brother at the beginning of the second act. After Lucia Presati, uh, yeah, and she enters the stage. And as they are approaching the end, there are several repetitions which, which make it, at least to, to the versions we are used to, it, it sounds repetitive. So when it is cut there, the, the tension of the duet seems to flow better. And that would be ex the explanation. The, the drama flows even better when you do this because of this, of this. Not because the soprano says, ah, no, I don't feel like I'm going to sing it. Cut it away. I don't want to sing it. <laughs> Why about sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> well, th and, th and there are tenors who also do that, of course. I, I was thinking of Di Quella Pira. Uh, you know oh. that people just go to or to see the Trovatore just because they want to see to, to hear the high C from the tenor. And uh, when there is the choir uh, singing in the background, da, 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 da. but the, the, the tenor is not actually singing. He's just waiting for the choir to shut up so that he can <laughs> sing his note. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I understand you are saving your uh, sparing yourself to do to give that note, but if, if you really <laughs> cannot sing it throughout the whole area, why are you even singing that role, right? But well, yeah. And, and now I also recalled uh, another Aus Australian soprano that has been we have <laughs> been naming very often in these programs <laughs> because. <laughs> <You're> uh, <laughs> Because now I recall that she sang this song, uh, this aria from Le Cid, uh, Cleure mes yeux, uh, my eyes are crying. And I, when I noticed that she had recorded that aria, I asked myself, how is she going to sing the low, the bass notes at the end? And the reason, uh, and the way she did it was very simple. She sang them an octave higher. I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> but where is the drama? If you wrap up, that's where you say, because it is dramatic. But if you say, where is the drama? <laughs> you sing it like the, yeah, no. the drama is that you don't have that sound. <laughs> <laughs> is the drama? Yeah, right. The drama is when you notice, oh, I have to do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let's go for another one before because we are about to to have Katya sing again. But before we do that, oh, this is this is not a nice one. The divo or the diva used to mistreat his or her fellow singers because he or she thinks he's allowed to. Again, I I think you know many examples of which we are not giving names again, but it is sad. It, it, it is very sad when you have uh, someone, uh, a colleague on a stage and you notice how he mistreats people. It's, it's just something to be embarrassed, not something to be proud. Yeah. You have never done that, right? Uh, of course not. <laughs> be, be, because I saw yeah. your face and you were like, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I hope I have. No, not at all. <laughs> if it, re remember that if it is not on, on Facebook, it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. So. No, 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 not at all. No, like I said, and I think I repeat it a lot. Uh, we we serve people, we serve public. So we, we have to respect everyone. And instead, uh, when you when you know that you are the stronger performer on the stage, you should be helping your fellow singers. Of course. Not doing that. Yes. Other. You have to support. You have to advise. You have to help. We are partners. We are not um, in a war. We are not opposite sides. Yeah, we're, well, I was about to say we are not competing, but actually, yeah, many singers are competing on stage, so... <laughs> Let's let's <laughs> let's pass it there. And I know that you are going to sing us something now. What is it that you are going to share us? Oh yes, I have this "Devieni non tardar" from Le Nozze di Figaro. 
And I, I have to say that it is my my first area, the first area I was uh, given and I started to study. But <laughs> talking about these um, deep sounds, I was studying the part where you say, Nowadays, I sing it. But when I was studying this, I had not the sounds at all. <laughs> and my teacher told me, you may sing. <laughs> And that's what I did in that moment, but now I think Addis is great. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's see. Shumse al fin il momento che godrò senza fano e braccio alido il mio. You, but I could listen to Mozart all day long. Oh, it's my favorite composer in this life, next <laughs> in this world, and others. <laughs> he, he, he had such a nice taste, a, a nice way of writing for the voice. Uh, this, this precise way of letting uh, the voice flow. I, I think some tenors may disagree, as in La Clemenza di Tito, <laughs> but, <laughs> but <yeah. laughs> except for well, that. I 
think about the end of the night, uh, but 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 yes, it flows. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but but even uh, the queen of the night, uh, uh, if, if you forget about the high, the highest notes notes she sings, in fact, it is a very 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 nicely written character. Yeah, I I think that there is not a most beautiful way to say kill him. Ah yeah, you you, you have never <laughs> you have never heard such a uh, nicer way of saying that. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's go, <laughs> let's go for our next topic. And I don't want to give the comment, but tell me, or tell us better, because it is usually you, you people that are watching us. Uh, by the way, I would like to thank people we noticed, I noticed in the statistics, a uh, few people from Belch following the channel now. So thank you very much. Yeah. Our best regards from Mexico to you people in, Bel in Belgium. Uh, thank you for joining us. So excuses if Katya and I have this conversation just as between her and I. But it is because we like to keep it natural. But I would like to now that you address to all people watching this video. And uh, when, when you finish a recital, when you had a presentation, people usually like to approach to you. Tell us a little about what do they tell you? How do they how do you treat them in response? Okay, well, uh, people used to tell me that they enjoyed um, my work, that I think, well, I have a beautiful voice, that they loved my singing, then that they loved uh, perhaps a special piece of music. And I always try to, to listen to these comments because um, it is nice to to feel that you made a great work because finally you work and effort and rehearse to, to have a, a, a good product. But um, I think that it would be nice to, to listen that someone telling, it, it would be nice to, to hear somebody telling you that maybe something can get better because we we are changing all the time and we're learning all the time so it it would be nice to to know what else could you do to increase um this work you're doing for them and i always try to be nice uh probably i'm not <laughs> because i'm not perfect <laughs> i don't know but i i i always try to to listen to, to be humble, to really appreciate their, their words, to take uh, all these good things. And uh, when, when I thank every single person that approaches to me, I, I do it from, from my heart. Have, have you had a time when you know you were not in the best conditions and you know, uh, well, people may may suppose it, so we may confirm it now. When you know that you did not the did it as well as you wanted, because you know we're humans, so something may have happened differently. And when the people approach to you and say, "Hey, you did great," but deep deep inside of you, you know that you didn't do it the way you were expected to do. How do you react? You you feel at the end like maybe a little depressed, a little angry, and in return, when people approach to you, or you just get over it very quickly? No, um, I remember my last concert uh, in a university. I was crossing by uh, depression and anxiety and lots of stress. And when, while I was singing, I felt like I was about to have a heart attack. <laughs> I, I felt terrible. And... It didn't. It wasn't um, present in my voice. I think I sound well, but I was feeling like dying. And when all these people come around and start to say, "Oh, you were great, and you sound beautiful," it was like medicine. It saved my life because I was about to say, "Oh my God, I don't want to keep singing anymore." So it saved my life. <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, well, many people may not be aware of it, but for many singers, the I would say the love, the love that you give in return to the singer, really means a lot. 
So yeah, when when you, when you have had because I think it it is something that works both ways. Uh, you you give them something you prepare for them to appreciate, and in return they appreciate you with a nice applause. Yeah. So with that in mind, how is it that we have singers that also treat the public as crap? Singers who think are some so, so, so much high in the sky that don't even belong to this world, that if you encounter them at the airport and you say hi and you want an autograph or just to just that, just say hi. And, you know, there are these singers that, oh, please, please, please don't take my time. I'm still busy or please, please get out of yeah. my way. I, I have an, a personal anecdote, which I shared with soprano Belinda Ramirez a couple of, I believe, uh, about a month and a half ago. I had already attended some of her concerts when I was a teenager still, and my mother had the chance of seeing her sing at the, an, an auditorium that she worked close to. She came home and, she, and my mother gave me a cassette. So just imagine how many years of that. So <laughs> she gave me a tape. <laughs> Oh, my God. I found one. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had an autograph of Belinda Ramirez on that one. And my mother was so very happy because she told me that Belinda, the singer, the soprano, was not only a very beautiful woman, which Belinda actually is, for people who know her, but she told me she's such an, a nice and gentle woman. You, you know, if, if all singers could project that, that they say, oh, he sang well, but at the end I approached him and he treated me like crap. I mean, that, that shouldn't even happen. Uh, pe people, fellow singers, if you, if you have someone approaching you, please, you, you know you have to appreciate them back. Don't take them for granted. Your, your music yeah. will go away some point in your life, so make sure you didn't do something nasty to them. Yeah, uh, I would like to add that... Um, when you take <clears throat> that kind of attitude, I think that you have lost your vision and your mission as singer, because you you start um, study and prepare as as a singer to to share to give not just to to show off and look I'm so a talented person. It is about to give. So when you treat somebody like this, you you lost your sight and the floor. And uh, if you allow me, I would like to share with you now something else. It is going to be from Zarzuela, La del Soto del Parral, and the Romanza. This piece of, of music is called Ya Mis Horas Felices, which I really, 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 really love. And which, unfortunately, is for a baritone. As I told you last week, the best pieces are for baritones. That just can't be. So how can a beautiful <laughs> piece of music like this can take place in a program for divas and divas? Because one of the most popular tenors of the recent times, whose name I am not going to give, <laughs> recorded it. Of course, he did something whenever the, the written notes for the baritones could be somehow difficult to sing, <laughs> he did some changes. <laughs> <laughs> so, since tenors do that very often, that's what I am going to do. Be because it had to be in a program like this, okay? So, you, you can already see at Katia's look of disapproval, but what can we do? Life's just not fair. <laughs> it's not. Ya mis horas. <clears throat> Sorry. I, I shouldn't have drunk water before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this proves that we are live, right? <laughs> so I went and now I lost where I was. Ya mis horas felices me alegre vivir. Todos los risas y esperanzas no volveréis a mí. Si con fuerza en mi pecho 
pecho prendió la llama del pesar, desamor, llanto y amargura, solo podré alcanzar. Eres mi mujer, la que yo quiero, y a ti solo mi corazón. Yo no sé fingirte, ni pensé en la traición, ni sabré mentirte nunca con mi pasión. Si sufro callando, respeta el silencio. Hablar no es posible, pues debo callar. Ya veis si es tormento sufrir. Sin Quiero desterrar de tu pecho el temor. Quiero que tu fe should give a couple of minutes for this thing that uh, tenors really love taking away pieces from the baritones which is <laughs> which is somehow unfair let me tell you why I have a, a good friend that knows all the recordings of this famous Spanish tenor who has sung many baritones romances so people now are used to the way he does it and for his instance, in this uh, in this song the, that I just sung, when you, when he says "En tus brazos mojar," that is something that baritones cannot do, unless he's a, unless he's a, a a very light baritone or a very high baritone, they have a much wider voice, so they they go like "mojar," you know, much wider. 
but it doesn't sound as when a tenor does. So I shared a very nice video of a very famous baritone, a Spanish baritone, baritone as well, to this friend, and he replied back telling me, no, this version sucks. So, so I asked him <laughs> why, and he told me, because he doesn't do it the way a tenor does. So when tenors sing baritone pieces, they make people get used to the way it would sound in the voice of a tenor, but tenors sound different. So when people are confronted to how they actually should be sung, now it turns out that they prefer the tenors when they should be preferring the baritones. So, <laughs> so tenors are monsters. <laughs> so tenors could be monsters as well, yeah, right. <laughs> Occasionally, tenors can be monsters. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> And I have another comment here. Uh, uh, this is for this is for most uh, most most of the times for a soprano. The diva keeps a note a note much higher or for longer just to expose that his fellow singer is weaker. Notice, not because he or she can, <laughs> but because he wants to prove that his fellow singer on stage is weaker. <laughs> Oh my God! Stop laughing and tell us a tell us a an anecdote of that. No, I don't used to do that. Well, <laughs> don't tell me you've never been on a stage with someone who has not been very good to you, and you say, "I will take my revenge then." <laughs> no, no, no! Of course not. Never? I'm a great person, indeed. <laughs> no, because um, I think that we all have differences with our partners and. You don't have to love all of them, but there are places to arrange things, not on stage. <laughs> but but there are there are people who really do that on stage. And of course, yes, and I've heard cases, and I know names that I will not give. But <laughs> you're, you're nervous now. Yeah. You recall someone, no, right? <laughs> I know that happens, but I think that. Again, we have to think in the music and in the in the public. So um, I shouldn't, and I haven't, and I won't. <laughs> and, and you know, uh, th there are many times, or I'm not sure if it has ever happened to you, that you may be feeling that day perfectly well. You know, uh, we have shared in the past that the voice is not always that healthy. And there are days when your voice is very, very good. But that day happens to be a very bad day for a fellow singer. <laughs> so it, it, it can happen that you, you actually don't want to showcase yourself or to make him feel worse. But the truth is that people notice when the when there is one that is not in the best conditions and when there is one that is actually much better that day I, I recall an anecdote it was one of the most famous uh dramatic tenors that we have had in mexico he was having one of his last recitals a good number of years ago in the past and it was a much younger uh, rodolfo acosta I can give his name because his, his reference is positive. He, he was uh, on the same program that day, and I told myself, oh, my God, two tenors on the same stage. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> One of them, much younger, uh, the other tenor, was already retired. So I told myself, this is not going to work. Of course, uh, the, the tenor retiring mm, broke, broke his voice a good number of times. He was not in good con besides being retired that day he was not in very good conditions and i saw rodolfo do something that i really loved it was not his number but he left he he entered the stage he uh, somehow hugged the other tenor gave him an applause and continued singing along with him you know th that level of professionalism and at the end yeah. When people were giving the applause, he himself was applause, uh, giving the applause to him because we knew that the effort for him was much higher given the, that he was already retired. And we felt this level of, you know, uh, a partnership on stage. Yeah. 
which we all really loved. That, that's an yeah. anecdote that I wanted to share. Yeah, it is, it is a great anecdote. Uh, it has to do with, um, I use respect a lot, but I think it is an, an, a very important question. Um, it has to do with um, partnership and um, with empathy. And I think that it talks more about your human quality that I will sing louder, I will sing higher, I will sing longer. Yeah, there are places to show off, there are music to show off, and you have to take care with your circumstances. And uh, as uh, with these comments, I would like to wrap up today's program telling you that uh, let's bring the meaning of Diva on Divo to all those artists who are just great in the art they recreate, in their professionalism, in the way they treat people. Let's bring back that meaning to Diva and Divo. And let's forget about all these divas and divos that just have problems trying to control themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's give diva and divo that great value that yeah, those words deserve to have, to recognize an artist and not just spoiled and pampered adults who never really grew up. <laughs> With that in mind, and... Um, of course, we will have a Katia wrap up today's program, singing something else. But before we do that, I would like to share with you that today is the last program of this first season, if we are allowed to call it like that. We have uh, uh, today we have had eight programs talking about a good number of miscellaneous topics around uh, opera and the world of singing that I have enjoyed a lot. You have noticed that we that we loved, uh, we love um, most of the program, <laughs> even if we are talking about serious topics. I hope this series has helped you somehow. And I want to announce that the very next program, we are changing to a different topic and we will be talking about the most popular arias in opera. If you watched us first on YouTube, you may have realized that it is Katya again who is introducing that new season. Uh, it started playing on YouTube a couple of days ago, and I noticed that people are already reacting positively to that uh, announcement of the new season. So thank you very much, Katia, for being with me in this first season, and we will continue to see you on the second one. And now let's leave place to the music, please. Okay. I'm about to share Noche Hermosa from this Sarsuela Katiuska. It's a very special song for me because it almost has my name. So it is a piece of music that I love a lot. And I would like to dedicate this viendo este programa. Espero que disfrutes la canción. And I hope that it is. Um, a good song for all of you watching us. Noche hermosa, de cosmina perfumada, ni le aleco, le repito mis palabras. Noche hermosa. Hey! 